Hello everyone, my name is Jeffrey Kennedy and welcome back to another episode of Market Academy. Now as you know last week we kind of began a multi-week series here on just kind of a really a basic review uh, of the Elliott Wave Principle because you know this is one of my primary tools that I utilize uh, not only for market analysis but also to trading. And last week we spent our time discussing and reviewing uh, the impulse wave which is again one of two types of motive wave patterns. The second type of motive wave pattern, of course, is the ending diagonal. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. And that's what we're going to be discussing this week. So let's go and get started. And now what's most important to remember about an ending diagonal is that it is a terminating wave. OK, so it's limited as to where it may actually occur. And I'll show you those positions shortly. But this is what it looks like utilizing old school terminology. Uh, it is referred to as a rising wedge. But what's more important is a lot of those old school, uh, say, pattern identification, uh, it was more of just kind of like a cursory observation. Yes, this looks like a rising wedge. But what Ralph Nelson Elliott did whenever he developed the wave principle, uh, discovered it back in the 1930s, he actually codified each individual pattern. So even though it may actually look like a rising wedge, i.e. an ending diagonal, doesn't necessarily make it so. And what I mean by that is each move, each wave of an ending diagonal must subdivide into three waves, specifically a zigzag. So you would have a zigzag, ABC, 535 pattern here, 535 pattern here, zigzag, here you would have a zigzag, here you would have a zigzag, and here you would have a zigzag. Zigzag. Now, there are rare instances, um, say probably is, you know, less than 10 percent or even in single digit territory uh, where you might encounter a double zigzag, uh, meaning like WXY. But it's it, it's certainly not the norm. And, you know, it's one of those things where you might find one a year or maybe one every five years. Uh, they do occur. Uh, I've run, I've encountered that myself. But again, it's uh, a very rare occurrence In rare occurrences. I sometimes utilize the terminology of, hey, this is a unicorn. OK, this is not the norm. You're not going to see it all the time or every day. Now, also two ending diagonals in and of themselves are somewhat of a rare pattern. OK, not maybe rare might be too strong of a word, but I would probably say you know, most of the time, you know, age 70 percent, 80 percent of the time you're going to see whenever whenever it comes to uh, motive wave structure, you're going to encounter the impulsive move. Uh, the other remaining, say, 20 percent of the time or probably even less, uh, that's where you'll encounter that ending diagonal. Now, remember, again, each move, each wave of an ending diagonal must subdivide into three waves, again, specifically a zigzag. And just to remind everybody, if you want uh, a list of these rules and guidelines, there's no better book out there that I'm aware of uh, other than Elliott Wave Principle written by A.J. Frost and Robert Prechter. And if you go to chapter two, pages 86 through 91 in that book, what Robert Prechter did was he actually codified and gave you a list. OK, here are all the rules which govern, say, impulse wave development. Here are all the rules that govern uh, the development of a diagonal or an ending diagonal in this case. So I highly recommend if you don't have that book, it is in a, and if you are interested uh, in the wave principle, want to understand, say, its foundational principles, there's no better book out there other than what Robert Prechter wrote. So definitely use that as a resource because I have a copy right in my hand as I'm doing today's lesson and I've had one ever since. OK, so remember, again, it's an overlapping five wave move. That's also to another key character characteristic and also to kind of touching on what we discussed last week. Remember whenever we were talking about uh, you cannot as one of the rules that governs the development of an impulsive move. Uh, wave three can never be the uh, shortest impulse wave of waves one, three or five. Uh, it doesn't always have to be the longest, but it can never be the shortest. That same idea holds true for the diagonal. So what we have here is the converging variety. The one, three and the two, four trend lines converge. So in this instance here, wave three is going to be shorter than wave one, which means that wave five must be shorter than wave three. 
Now, remember, it is an ending pattern, okay? It is a terminating wave, which means it is limited as to where it may actually occur. So where can an ending diagonal occur? It can occur in the wave C position uh, of a zigzag, or it can occur in the wave C position of a flat, or it can occur in the wave five position of an impulse wave. So I would say typically I would find if I had to rank them, uh, diagonals tend to occur five of uh, wave five of, of an impulse wave, uh, is followed by say most likely say wave C of a zigzag followed by wave C of a flat. Okay, uh, but this is again, uh, so whenever you're looking at a price chart and you think that you see ending diagonals everywhere, well, before you assume and jump to the conclusion and embrace the idea that, yes, that is indeed an ending diagonal, you need to make sure the subdivisions are appropriate, it has the right look, and it does indeed adhere to the rules and guidelines of the wave principle. Also, too, make sure it's in the right position. Okay, now next let's look at some of the, say, the Fibonacci relationships we tend to see. Now, of course, wave three is going to be less than wave one. Wave five is going to be less than wave three. As far as wave two, typically a 618 retracement. And as far as your fourth wave move here, uh, typically a 50% retracement. Um, and uh, again, you must have that overlap between wave four and wave one. Uh, now, one thing, just kind of, you know, make a note of this as I say it, one of the things that I've observed about ending diagonals is a lot of times your wave three uh, will move or travel to the 786, that's it, 786 multiple of wave one. And wave five will travel to a 786 multiple of wave three. Uh, I just see that so frequently when it comes to a, you know, a legitimate ending diagonal. Uh, it seems that that pattern really does en enjoy or really like uh, those uh, that Fibonacci ratio, that Fibonacci multiple. So remember, wave 3 equaling a 786 multiple of wave 1, wave 5 equaling a 786 multiple of wave 3.